I want to share with you my understanding about this theoretical 960 Hz OLED display. And this article is directed to display manufacturers, okay? It is from 2018 and we still don't have this display. It seems like they don't understand it. <laughs> so maybe if I can get more clarity in this concept, I can apply for a job at LG. <laughs> so we can get the, the, this display soon and you know I am glad and I'm honored to have the Blurbusters chief sometimes giving us some you know knowledge on the comment sections uh, that's amazing I mean he when it comes to motion clarity he is the man okay so I feel very happy to have a little bit of his time and his attention to to give us some uh, wisdom <laughs> okay so let me explain you what I understand about this idea this is something mind-blowing so this works and this is being tested right now with projectors he told me in one of the comments that this is being tested right now with 4k 60 Hertz projectors so basically they have like a theater with uh, with 16 4k 60 Hertz projectors together forming a 960 Hertz 4K image, okay? Fascinating stuff. So how, how does this uh, work? What, what is this idea all about? Imagine we're going to work with 120 Hertz for this example. So imagine you have a 120 Hertz uh, projector. That is going to take 8.3 milliseconds to go from top to bottom. So the frame time is going to be 8.3 milliseconds. So if you want one millisecond, approximately one millisecond of persistence, you need one millisecond from top to bottom. Okay, not 8.3. So how can you achieve that? Here's what, this is the idea. That same projector is going to take one millisecond to cover this section of the screen because you have one plus one plus one eight times you have eight milliseconds okay so the idea is this imagine you have this lgc one for example <laughs> this is tough to to explain but i think i i can do it imagine you have this lgc one it's 120 hertz and it's 3840 by 2160 4k resolution so Imagine we can cut in half this display so it is instead 3840 by 1080 resolution. If we have the same capabilities, we should be able to now refresh at 240 hertz instead of 120. Why? Because it takes, with the capabilities of this LGC1, it takes 8.3 milliseconds to go from top to bottom but it would take half the time to go from top to half of the screen so if we can if we cut in half the screen we can have a 240 hertz lgc1 3840 by 1080 resolution so that's the idea if we don't complete the the refresh we need less time so what if we cut the display in this section just an eighth an eighth of the of the screen then we have a one millisecond display then we have a 960 hertz display of course nobody wants that because <laughs> that aspect ratio would be like unusual but imagine you have projectors and the idea of the projector is easier to to the picture because you can have multiple projectors pointing to the same screen so one of the projector is going to be displaying this section and the rest is going to be black the other projector is going to be displaying this section and the rest is going to be black so the frames that we are delivering to that projector specifically to this projector for example specifically is only frames that have this 
picture, this section of the picture. The rest is black, so it doesn't interfere. And then we have a device or a, a mechanism to synchronize together all the projectors. So that's the idea. And they are all going to work at the same time. They are all going to be one millisecond. So when one of the projectors starts refreshing, the others are also going to refresh. So you start here refreshing, then you start here refreshing. So it's the same at the same time. They are all refreshing at the same time. See, they are all one millisecond. So it is one millisecond. So the, the, the total, the, the final picture has one millisecond of persistence. It is 960 hertz. So you might, you might wonder, how can you get, how can you get more frames? Because now we are delivering 960 frames to a, <laughs> to a, dis, a display that was initially uh, capable of 120. How can you do that? Because the reason why you can do that is because you are reducing the size of the of the screen. So imagine this LG C1, if we cut the TV in half, okay, of course that is something, um, you know, for you to imagine. We Of course we cannot cut the TV in half, but you know what I mean. If we cut the TV in half, we have 3840 by 1080, then at that same speed we can refresh twice as fast and we have a 240 hertz display now. So if we have a 240 hertz display, we can have 240 frames per second delivered to that display. Okay. So now we have clear that we can definitely deliver 960 frames per second to each of the projectors or, or to each of the sections of this theoretical OLED TV. But now my question is, and this is the thing that I don't understand yet. Some, I've been thinking about it and I am like, oh, I got it. And then, no, 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 I don't understand it yet. No. So I'm like, yes, yes, I understand it. And no. so I'm back and forth. Uh, so I would like to have this clear. How can this look good? How can this look good? <laughs> because they are all refreshing at the same time. And of course they are, they all have different frames. They all have different uh, pictures. So if it looks like this, how can this look good? Also, this picture is, is moving from left to right based on the, on the picture. It's moving from left to right. Why do I see the picture uh, tilted this way? I think it should be this way because the latest uh, frame should be the, this one at the top. So this one should be the most up the most updated frame. So this should be here instead of here, and everything should be like this. So that's the part that I don't understand. How can that look good? I don't understand that. <laughs> so I'm still trying to to figure that out. So let me read to you before I finish the uh, the video. Let me let me see how much time I have. Uh, yeah. So let me read to you real quick one of the some of the comments I got from the Blurbusters uh, chief. This is just fascinating. So I was talking about you know the black frame insertion dream, uh, basically. How much brightness do we need uh, on a TV to get an 800 nits peak brightness if the if the TV is 120 hertz and that's like about six thousand nits. So he commented on that video uh in my humble opinion by 2030 it will be easier to add reprojection to allow 1000 fps 1000 hertz without bfi i think 1000 fps 1000 hertz oleds will arrive before 2030 then if a plus b becomes true who needs bfi for newer content that supports it all CRT motion clarity without strobing or flickering and you keep HDR win-win. So that's the direction we're going. Okay. 
and I will explain that. I'm still studying reprojection so I can do a video about it. That's, that's the direction we're going because we need that high FPS, high refresh rate because of HDR. Because as I explained in that video, we, we would need to lose too much brightness to get better motion clarity by using a black room insertion. So we don't want to lose that brightness and we do not want the picture to flicker. So flickerless, high brightness, that's the way to go. And how, how can we get there? Upscaling, frame generation stuff, and reprojection. Uh, and I will explain how that works soon. I'm still trying to understand that. So yeah, uh, let's see if, we, if I can figure this out and maybe get a job at LG. <laughs> and I will cover the, the Witcher 3. I just didn't want to have a negative video today because it sucks. <laughs> Witcher 3 is just a mess, man. But I will, I will definitely uh, cover it. Let me know if you have any questions.